right, we're going to travel to, uh, I think it's where the North Chittenden is where you're from, yep. Baird Farm. Yeah. All right, so you're in, uh, and we're talking with uh, Jen, Jenna Baird and Jacob Pausner, and they're with Baird Farm uh, Maple. Welcome. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks. Family's had this operation for a while, huh? Yeah, so our farm's been in my family for a long time. Um, we just celebrated our 102nd birthday on May 9th. Um, my great grandmother bought the farm in 1918. So we've been doing it for quite a while. How is the season? Uh, you explain what you have. You have a number of taps and you make uh, maple syrup, of course. But uh, explain uh, how the season went. We had a good season. Uh, definitely made a full crop down here. Uh, we had a bit of a banner year last year. Um, so we didn't do quite as well as last year, um, but certainly made what we needed to make. Um, up north, uh, generally speaking, it looks like they've had a spectacular year uh colder uh sugar bushes for the most part looks like they they sugared out better than warmer sugar bushes yeah we tapped just around uh a little less than twelve thousand taps and we on average make right around a half a gallon per tap so we we hit our goal this year but <laughs> yeah i think i heard from some sugar makers they thought it wasn't as um the sugar content wasn't as high this year in a lot of places yeah, that's kind of what we experienced as well. Yeah, of course it was a strange, uh, it was a strange winter. It really never really took off. We didn't have a lot of tremendously cold uh, conditions this year. Yeah, uh, this year there wasn't quite as uh, deep of a snowpack. Uh, we do get some decent snow, but down here is not like up in Cabot. Uh, we're a bit in the banana belt down here. Um, so, uh, tapping this year, um, and also, uh, throughout the season, uh, the walking was, was pretty easy. So when, when sugaring was happening, we were just in the, in the throes of this, uh, this pandemic, it kind of sort of kicked off in sugaring. Um, and how did you adapt at the sugar house with this all happening? We started to all hunker down, uh, during that period of time and probably not as many people were able to visit you at that time. Right, yeah, we, it kind of started off where, well, the Maple Open House weekend um, was supposed to happen on, I think it was the 24th and 25th of March, and so just before that, um, we decided to cancel, and the Sugar Makers uh, Association decided to cancel as well, um, and so we, we missed a lot of visitors, but we have um, done a lot of pickup orders here, and uh, our online sales have been pretty good, too, so... Um, we've done some virtual tours, which has been fun because we had to cancel all the in-person tours, and I yeah. think people have enjoyed that. But yeah, just trying to yeah. create a space. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are being very creative through this and adapting and changing overnight of what to do and and trying to, uh, you know, make a go of it. So, how did what what kind of things are you doing differently now that you that you weren't doing maybe last year at this time? Uh, we're we're still cranking out a lot of social media content, really trying to get people to engage uh, with the website, um, but also reaching out to locals and really pushing the, the curbside pickup. Um, one of the components of our business here, which is uh, we're still trying to navigate, is how to do tours. Lots, lots of times we do kind of sugar house tours, uh, mostly for uh, folks coming from out of state. Um, so that clearly hasn't uh, been active again uh, yet, but at some point um, in the future, uh, we'll have to kind of do those tricky steps of doing that in a safe way that's best for everybody. Yeah, and the um, and you are very active on um, social media and your marketing, and you do a great job of. I think you your focus is you're educating uh, your audience about uh, the day in the life of what it's like to be a producer. Yeah, yeah. We also. Um, at the, right when COVID kind of started here, we started a, well, Jacob started a kind of a campaign of positivity posts. Um, so we chose one thing from each day that was brought positive um, thoughts to us. And I think our followers really enjoyed that, um, especially given the times. And we yeah, follow no. Instagram too, Anson, which we get quite a bit of pleasure from. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, we had uh, yesterday I had a woodcock. I hadn't seen a woodcock in a while. It was crossing the road. So that was pretty exciting for me, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The positive, you got to keep you got to keep positive to all this right. stuff. But sure, is it your dad who's the star of your Instagram? For these things that I, I see, is it your dad that, that I see quite a bit that's uh, uh, part of uh, explaining what's going on in the world? 
<laughs> yeah, my dad's on there quite a bit. People love seeing him, but he's well, he he always gets annoyed with me when I take out the camera. But <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what. Yeah, I know what that's like. To, um, you know, I never go anywhere without a camera. You never know what's going to happen. You know, so you, you got to do that. So, so um, a lot of online. Um, and what kind of products do you have? You you, you sell maple syrup, but do you have other products that you sell? So we do a lot of value added maple. Uh, we do a couple different infused maple syrups um, from foraged ingredients. We do a spruce dip maple. We do a mint maple. We make a maple ketchup, and we do other uh, things like granulated sugar as well. Um, and then you know the history of this farm was it was a dairy farm. Bonnie and Bob milk cows here for a long time. For most of the past hundred years, that was the kind of the bread and butter of this farm. Um, and now Jenna and I are growing Christmas trees, uh, but they're not, they're not quite ready yet. They won't be ready for this Christmas. <laughs> they're yeah. pretty small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes, it takes a while for that. So uh, you've got me intrigued by the mint maple. How do you make mint maple? Well, we, we harvest the mint from the, from the back pastures here, uh, spearmint, right? We wash mm -hmm. it, clean it, pick it all. And then we basically hot steep it uh, in maple syrup, like like you're making tea, right? Um, for days on end, um, and that's how the infusion is done here. It's pretty oh, that's good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of mint. I like yeah, that's a, that sounds really that sounds really great. That would go that would go well. Yeah, we'll have to get you some. We'll have to get you some. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of these infused syrups are, are pitched towards the cocktail market. So mm -hmm. with mint. You know, think like a uh, mojito um, right. or, or julep, right? Um, but it's just as good on top of, uh, I've been putting it on yogurt every morning. It's excellent. Nice. Yeah. And ketchup as well. Talk about the ketchup. Yeah, so we started making that probably two, three years ago maybe now. Um, and so we've got uh, quite a few retail stores around Vermont. Um, it's uh, made from scratch and only sweetened with our dark maple syrup. So instead of a high fructose corn syrup, it gives it, you know, that, that sweetness that a regular ketchup has, but in a more a healthier <laughs> way. Um, yeah, so it has a little bit more body to it, right? Um, you know, Hunt and Heinz sell a lot of ketchup because it's all, it's half corn syrup. Uh, so we're not doing that here. Um, but it's great. Yeah. It's been, re it's been really well for us. You know, there's a lot of maple mustards and maple hot sauces on the market, but this is the, the only maple ketchup. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's great. Um, so, um, you're in the middle of this. Um, what do you do through the spring and, in in the summer? Um, you know, most people think it's just, um, you know, figuring just that six weeks or a month, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, um, we do, you know, we do a lot of maintenance in the woods. We're actually potentially starting an, an expansion project, which will start later this summer. So we're adding some taps, um, and that's always quite a bit of work. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the summer keeps us busy, and, and I'm not sure about this summer, but with tours to our farm, um, we have a lot of tour buses that usually come. Um, we'll see how that pans out, but I don't think. We'll be doing as many this year, but it'll give us a good chance to uh, work on other projects. Right now, we're redoing a floor in our sugar house. Yeah, so because nobody's in the store, we're actually redoing our, our floor. Um, and uh, cows came on the farm today. Uh, we we graze cows in the summertime. Um, and uh, we just finished planting our Christmas trees. Uh, so always something to do, for yeah, sure. And we both at the farm, too. I've worked out on a a vegetable farm and um, Jacob's work got some other farms off, off our farm too. Well, there seems to be a, a, a lot of activity of you know, going directly to the farm now to get um, get food and, and produce and products. So you might probably see some more traffic because of that, I guess, because of the uh, pandemic. And I think we've had a reset on agriculture in the last uh, three or four months. Yeah, and definitely a more focus on shopping local too. Yeah. So, that, what kind of cows arrived? Are they heifers? Uh, mostly, mostly black Angus, um, but we also have some Devons coming from a, another farm down in Pittsburgh. Uh, just uh, in the next couple of days, we'll see when. Um, but yeah, so we we have about 120 acres of open land here, and about 
um, 80 of that is, is grazed. Yeah. Well, that's great to have animals back on the land. That's always a wonderful thing in the spring. I've seen a few posts where people are letting their cows out and out to pasture and everyone's pretty happy with that. <laughs> Yeah, as long as, fence, as long as the fence is okay, those phone right. calls, get those phone calls, the cows are out. That's yep. been one of those. We've been uh, there before. <laughs> yeah, I think we have all been there many a night, many a time that that happens. But great. So what what's next for you guys? What do you want to, um, where do you want to be in five years? So you, you know, you've got some, what sounds like you got some plans to expand and you've got a, a map, but where would you like to be? And would you like to be thinking about as you grow? Uh we're trying to get to a sweet spot in terms of the size of the operation. We're really trying to get closer to 20,000 taps. Um, when that happens, you know, if, if you've seen some of the research that's coming out of UVM, there's kind of a, there's kind of an ideal spot for the scales of things. Um, and ideally we want to keep on connecting folks with real maple, both locally and across the country. Um, because that's where the, you know, the big markets are really kind of, in the cities out west um, or away from New England, let's say right now, because there is a lot of maple in New England and certainly a lot of maple being made in Vermont. Yeah, yeah so that research and you seem like you've got some, um, you know, the maple product seems to be a trend where it's more than just for your pancakes. Um, right. You're probably doing that with your infused products, and your, you know, your ketchup and so forth. But uh, yeah, there's, I think there's probably lots of opportunity. You know, we're, we're pretty used to maple here being the you know, maple capital of uh, United States, but get outside and they're like, it's a different experience. So there's probably a lot of opportunity there if we can just get it in front of them, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we hope to, um, with the Christmas trees, we're hoping to, kind of, we actually planted them right behind our sugar house. So to tie in the, the maple to that as well, especially during the holiday season where people can come through our sugar house, get a tour, if they want or purchase their Christmas gifts. <laughs> and then so ideally, the, the long-term goal is to have the farm be here for another 102 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, it sounds like you're off to a, a great start with that and you're diversifying and, and doing all the things you have to do. And, and you're in a spot where you might be able to pull some people off and come see you because you're near Killington and, and Pico and, and Rutland. And um, we're all looking for experiences, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it's, it's been it's been great chatting with you and um, wishing you and your your family all the best and a, a great uh, rest of of um, spring and summer and and uh, hopefully uh, things will settle down. But it sounds like you've got a plan and we appreciate your time spending a little bit of time with us chatting about about Maple and, and your operation. Yeah, and one thing I did want to add, um, just to give the the Vermont Sugar Makers Association a plug, um, we've been working around Vermont to collect donations from sugar makers uh, to donate to local hospitals during this time. Um, so we're donating syrup to the food service programs. Um, and all I've been collecting donations around Rutland County, but all the counties have been collecting syrup to give to the workers throughout everything they've done during this time. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I'm sure that's, that's, uh it's a great organization that's it's helping out and uh, there's nothing better than getting a little um, sweet packet of maple syrup for your, yourself. That's yeah, amazing. the sugar makers have been doing a good job to kind of pull together to show our support. So. That's wonderful. Well, have a great uh, have a great spring summer and thanks for chatting with us and, and we'll, we'll check in on you maybe yeah. in the next time or even Bye. soon. <laughs> thanks, Anson. Yeah, thank you. All right, take care. Take nice care. chatting. Bye-bye. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, all these discussions we've had with our farmers and producers have been wonderful. Now is the time to uh, support Vermont agriculture. They need it uh, and we need them. And we appreciate what they're doing through this uh, pandemic. Don't forget, be safe, uh, wear your mask if you're out in the public. Uh, we want to all be safe as we work our way through this uh, throughout the spring and summer. I'm Anson Tebbets. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>